on a spread in my big journal and the first thing that I want to do is finish here. I've got part of my stencil is dry and I need to do the other half. I'm using this Cathedral series and I'm actually using this one. <laughs> I'm using this one of the Artist Cellar Cathedral series and what I'm doing is making it look like a half circle. So in here already I have it going this way right so now what I'm and I've already applied the light molding paste here so I'm using light molding paste by golden it's very lightweight which is what I want because I'm working in a journal so what I'm going to do now to complete the half circle here I'm going to hold this and I'm going to flip it a quarter turn so what that does now is it gives me a half circle arc which is just what I want so see here I've got to put them together and I'm going to tape them in place. I'm just going to tape the corners. I'm not going to tape a lot because I want it to come off easily. So I'm just taping it. So this is a half of one so I'm butting it up against the other half there. And then I'm going to tape over here as well. So what I did was make sure that it's firmly in place now. And I moved it a little, sorry about that. Okay. So I'm gonna use a palette knife and what I'm gonna do is, it's just like frosting a cake. So I go into my molding paste, I usually stir it just a little to make sure that it's nice and um, soft. So then I just start applying the medium. I am not worried about making it perfect, right? I just am trying to get the design on there at this point. Some areas are going to be thicker, some are thinner, and I'm okay with that. Just holding the edge down to make sure that as I walk through it or push through it, and getting all the medium. When using something like this, I always give kind of a once over to make sure that I've got all the areas go. Okay, the thing when you're dealing with molding paste or gesso when you're using a stencil, you want to make sure that when you take it off, you wash both of these right away. So I just take it to my laundry tub and just wash it with really hot water and then just let it dry because what will happen is it will add a texture to your stencil and you don't want that and it will dry really hard on your palette knife. So when you're removing it, you I'm going to lift both sides of the tape here and lift straight up. That ensures that I'm not wrecking the design as it goes and you can see that it looks really cool. Can you see that? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go wash that and then it, I'm gonna let it dry and then I will be back. My molding paste is dry now and it's very flexible. That's the other thing I like about the light molding paste. See, I can bend it and it's not cracking, nothing about it. I think it's got a lot of uh, rubber or acrylic in it so that it lets me do that. But it looks very cool. Let me bring you up close so you can really see the details. And you can see where it's thick and thin where I did the palette knife. And there's the seam where the two came together. And here's the edge. Pretty neat, huh? So I'm going to flip it this way so that you guys can see me add the color. I'm going to wet it first. I'm using watercolor. 
So I want to dampen the page first. Let me hide that rubber band there. At Notre Dame, right? So this page is about my Notre Dame experience. The biggest window in there is the big rose window and it's purple and pink and it's gorgeous, right? But for me, for my page, my page is about the gothicness of the um, building and I am more infatuated with the building on the outside than, I'm, than I am on the inside. So the pictures that I've pulled have a lot of blue and green and um, just kind of grays. So I want to make my window here look kind of bluish and grayish because the fire picture is what has the color, right? So I found this picture off of the internet and it's the cathedral on fire. I know it's the saddest thing ever, but I want this to be the color of the page because this is why I'm doing the page. It's just such a tragic event. So I'm going to spray this. And I'm not even sure it's going to work, so we'll see. <laughs> I'm using a big brush here, and I want to just mix some big puddles of paint. So I am just using, a, I mean, a watercolors. And I just want to get some big puddles going. That's a nice color. I need to get that off of there. Now I want to try to mix kind of a... I've got the patina of the bronze statues are really kind of aqua green so I'm just mixing these here to see if I can get it kind of a cool color that's a nice color Then I want to mix kind of a bluish color, like a blue, black. Think of like kind of a navyish color. All right. I'm going to wet this again because it's dry already. Okay. Um, my hope is that the colors will just bleed into one another. like this purple so I'm going to try to tie it in everywhere. Okay, that's pretty neat. <laughs> I like the way that looks. So what I'm going to do now is touch some really dark color in there. So I'm really concentrating the color. And then I'm just kind of fling it on there for myself. Nice. no rhyme or reason. I'm just wanting it to have a little more motion in this window. And I like kind of the dark spots, how they dissipate. It's kind of neat. Okay, I'm going to blow dry this a little bit and then I'm going to come back and spatter it a little more. Okay, that's pretty dry now. So what I'm going to do is spatter again and let's hope that we can get some nice colors going on. Some nice rich color.
going to try to add some nice darks. Take some of that bright green now. Okay. Okay, what this has to do now is totally dry and my page is kind of buckled and that's because remember I sprayed it with a couple things of water and then I added all that watercolor on top so it's going to take a while for that to dry flat and I think the um, the molding paste is kind of absorbing it as well, absorbing some of the water so I'm going to like prop something under the page so that it will dry nice and uh, let some air circulate under the bottom here too because even the bottom of the page feels very wet. So once I get that done, um, I will come back and show you my finished page. So this is what my finished spread looks like. And you can see by the size of my hands just how big this journal is, right? So each page is 11 and 3 quarters by 16 and a half tall. So you can see why I added the more muted colors here, because I wanted it to go with this page. So the little touches here, even though the... Um, the stencil is not outlined. I love that you can feel it, that it looks like stained glass to me, and I just really am in love with this section of the page. I'm going to have to really weight it down to get the wrinkling off of the backs for the next page. But these are some of my favorite things. This is the front of the cathedral. This window here is the smallest of the rose window. Um, 9.6 meters in diameter is what it said. I don't know what that is in feet. But I love this window because of the three figures here. I just am always drawn to that every time I go. I've been there twice now. Every time I go, I try to draw them. This is the spear with its intricate detail, details and then the apostles going down the side. This is my favorite statue. And then I've got the picture of the cathedral on fire. And then I just wrote some facts about Notre Dame. And then I wrote about my visit to Notre Dame. And then I just did some little graphics from the stencil. But I'm going to bring you up so you can see the loveliness of this little area here. It turned out really, really pretty. Isn't it nice? I love how it just seems like a watercolor effect and that's exactly what I was going for. So. That's my Notre Dame spread, and I hope I've inspired you to try some of the light molding paste because it's really fun to work with. And it dries quite, quite nice. I mean, it took a while. It took about 45 minutes for this to totally dry, even though it was saturated. But it looks really great, and I know it'll flatten out just fine. So thanks for being here, and I hope you try some molding paste. Bye, everyone.